in the name of Allah, our creator, the creator of the universe and of everything that's in it, I greet you all, dear viewers, in our Islamic way. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. May Allah's peace, blessings, and mercy be with you all. One of the greatest signs of the might, knowledge, and wisdom of the creator is the creation of plants. Plants are amidst the greatest testimonies that can easily speak to every rational person that these plants cannot be the product of a chance or an accident. They could not have created themselves by themselves. They need a creator who gave every plant the capacity to absorb from the soil of the earth certain elements that can be used for the build up of the body of that plant and at the same time can help that plant to produce some fruit and every fruit has got its own color its own smell and its own taste and its own shape and this really if one can clearly meditate about the power which Allah has given each plant to choose according to its own nature the elements that are suitable for uh, its own shape and the shape and color and taste and smell uh, of its uh, products, with uh, fruits or seeds. So really, uh, the Quran speaks in many, many of its verses, many, many of its ayahs on the miracle in the creation of plants and the miracle in giving each plant the capacity to choose from the soil it's growing on certain elements and certain compounds that can help that plant to produce the needed fruit or the needed seed. And we may have two trees uh, next to each other uh, growing on the same soil and being watered with the same water, yet each tree can produce a, a di completely different fruit. And this is really amidst the very many signs that can testify to the might, knowledge, and wisdom of our Creator, who gave the plants, who actually gave every seed this particular capacity. We cannot, in a simple episode like this, cover the hundreds of verses, Quranic verses, that speak about plants and their products, but I'll choose one or two verses that can really portray to the viewers the scientific precision of the glorious Quran being the word of the creator and its divine purity being the word of the creator that has been preserved in uh, its language of uh, revelation the Arabic language for over uh, 14 centuries and uh, really the uh, divine promise is to preserve the Quran until the end of this world so that it can remain a living testimony on humanity at large, lest someone would claim that he never received a warning from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The Quran reads, Verily, we have sent down the reminder, and verily, we will be always preserving it. One of these striking uh, Quranic verses that speak out about plants comes in Surah uh, Al-An'am, where the Quran reads ayah number 99 and it is he our creator all glory be to him who sent down uh, rain or water from the sky from the firmament and in a previous episode we mentioned that the water cycle around the earth or what's known as the hydrogeological cycle is one of the many testimonies that can prove to, to every rational mind that this cycle cannot be uh, the product of uh, accident or a chance, but it needs a planner who is capable of designing it with that precision. It is Allah, our creator, the creator of the universe and everything that's in it. The verse reads, أَنزَلَ مِنَ السَّمَاءِ مَاءً It is he, uh, the great creator of this universe, who sent down water 
from the firmament, from the sky. فَأَخْرَجْنَا بِهِ نَبَاتَ كُلِّ شَيْءٍ With this water, we meaning Allah, meaning the supreme power of that universe, meaning the creator himself. فَأَخْرَجْنَا بِهِ نَبَاتَ كُلِّ شَيْءٍ We have produced with that water every single kind of vegetation, every single plant you know of on earth. فَأَخْرَجْنَا بِهِ نَبَاتَ كُلِّ شَيْءٍ فَأَخْرَجْنَا مِنْهُ خَضِرًا And from that plant, we have produced something green. نُخْرِجُ بِهِ حَبًّا مُتَرَكِبًا From that green thing in the plant, most of the green plants, we uh, can produce accumulating seeds. We can produce seeds that are produced in great number, accumulating on top of each other. Really, uh, one can read that verse and pass by it without uh, deeply meditating in it. But only very recently we came to realize that the green pigment in the green plants, known as the chlorophyll, is one of the greatest secrets of the creation of plants. Because this pigment, the chlorophyll, Allah has given it the capacity to take the solar energy and store it, and to take water from the soil or through watering, or from the humidity of the atmosphere, and take carbon dioxide from the atmosphere, and use the solar energy for analyzing both carbon dioxide and the water to its initial components. You analyze carbon dioxide into carbon and oxygen. The plant retains the carbon atom and releases the oxygen atoms for the breath or breathing of humans and animals. Similarly, it breaks the water molecule to its initial components. The two hydrogen atoms it retains and the oxygen atom is released for the breathing of both humans and animals. Then with the solar energy, this uh, simple pigment, Allah has given it the capacity to join the carbon atom with the hydrogen atoms using the solar energy in the form of chemical bonds that can produce a long chain of uh, carbohydrates, including many kinds of sugars, many kinds of starch, many kinds of cellulosic material, many of the plant oils and the plant fats. This is done through a tiny speck of this green material within the leaves of the green plants. For the Quran, a book revealed more than 14 centuries ago to spell out this fact at a time when nobody in the community of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, would have dreamt of knowing anything about this fact is an address to the people of our time that the glorious Quran cannot be the word of man. It is the divine word in its divine purity. Who could have known this fact 14 centuries ago? Muhammad, peace be upon him, was an unlettered prophet. And he was raised in an unlettered society. For the book revealed to him to present this fact, which only came to our knowledge in the 19th, 20th century, is a precedence by a scientific fact that can remain as a living testimony to the uh, divine nature of the glorious Quran and to the correct prophethood of Muhammad, peace be upon him. Only very recently we came to realize that it is through the action of the green pigment that Allah has given to the green plant. Uh, through this action, green plants can produce all sorts of carbohydrates from which and the plant can build its own body, its own stem and branches and leaves and roots, can produce its fruits and can produce its seeds and particularly the seeds that are mainly composed of uh, carbohydrates like the wheat, the, the maize, the rice and the rest are produced mainly through this miraculous action of the green material, which we call chlorophyll, this green pigment, using the solar energy 
water and carbon dioxide from the atmosphere. So this is a scientific notion in the glorious Quran that can testify to its scientific precision and can remain as a rational reasoning to any rational person that this statement cannot be the product of a human work, but it is a revelation from the Creator who has created this universe and everything that's in it. I will pass to another verse also from plants um, that reads, Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim, wa shajaratan takhrujan min turi sayma tanbutu bidduhni wa sibghin lil akilin. The Quran is speaking about a tree, a particular tree that comes out from the Sinai Peninsula. And it was shajaratan takhrujan min turi sayma, and a tree that grows up and comes out from the peninsula of Sinai. A tree springing out of Mount of Sinai, which produces oil and relish for those who use it for food. We will have a short break and come back to analyze this uh, uh, verse, this ayah, that also contains an immense amount of scientific information. Dear viewers, welcome back. Before this short break, we were discussing a very important uh, ayah in the glorious Quran that speaks about the olive tree. The verse reads, وَشَجَرَهَنْ تَخْرُجُ مِنْ طُورِ سَيْنَا تَنْبُتُ بِالدُّهْنِ وَصِبْغٍ لِلْأَكِلِينَ And a tree that uh, is produced or uh, that comes out from Mount Sinai that has got... Uh, its own fruit in the form of very important oil and uh, some sort of nourishment for those who eat it as well. And uh, this uh, notion indicates, first of all, that the origin of the olive tree is Mount Sinai. Secondly, it points to the fact that the olive uh, fruit is a very important fruit. Olives are uh, really uh, rich in oil and uh, the olive oil has been proved to be a very important oil for uh, human beings because it uh, reduces the bad cholesterol in the human body and enriches the good cholesterol uh, in the human body so it reduces the bad fats in the human body and enhances the good fats in the human body and it is the only oil we know of with this quality. No other kind of oil, sunflower oil or maize oil or any other kind of oil we know of cannot give the same results that the olive oil can give. And that's why it has been proved that people living in the Mediterranean region who are used to using olive oil in abundance in their food and eating oil the oil, uh, eating the olive itself, either salted or uh, unsalted. Uh, these are the least uh, people in the world who suffer from angina, from heart diseases, from heart strokes, because of the fact that olive oil is unsaturated oil that enhances the good fats in the human body and reduces the bad fats in the human body. The Quran is directing our attention to the importance of this. And a tree that springs out, that comes out, that is grown in Mount Sinai, and it is actually brings forth uh, a fruit that's rich in oil, and this oil is very beneficial to mankind. And a certain type of nourishment that can be added to this fat. This is the material that darkens a piece of bread immersed in olive oil. In another verse, in another surah towards the end of the Quran, we have a surah called Atin, where the oath is given by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Wattini was Zaytun, by the fig and the olive. And one would be amazed. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is above giving an oath to his creation. Allah does not need to give an oath to his creation. But when a Quranic verse comes in the context of an oath, 
So this is a way of directing our attention to the importance of the matter by which the oath is given. I came to uh, know that uh, during a piece of scientific research in Japan, an Egyptian student actually directed the attention of his professor to the fact that olive and fig are mentioned in the Quran in a certain proportion. Olive is mentioned seven times and the fig is mentioned only once. And he asked, could this indicate something? So they started experimenting, mixing seven uh, quantities of olive oil to one quantity of a fig. And they used this for treating several diseases. And for their surprise, they found that uh, this uh, mixture of uh, fig and olive oil in the ratio of one to seven is an excellent cure for many diseases, including cancer. And uh, this is uh, published, this work has been published, and has driven the Japanese scholar to embrace Islam. Not only this, but uh, this study also discovered that there is a certain enzyme in the fig fruit that cannot be found in any other fruit. It is called ficine. And uh, the human body needs that enzyme uh, immensely. This is a very, very important enzyme for the safety and healthy nature of the human body. Because of this, we find that oath in Surah Al-Teen, Wattini wa Zaytun, by the fig and the olive. And I dare uh, say here that the Holy Quran is not a book of medicine. It's not a book of astronomy. It's not a book of geology. It's not, not a book of chemistry. Yet we find these notions to direct the attention of people to the importance of these tiny little things that are essential to their living, to their existence, and to testify to every rational brain that this cannot be the word of man. It has to be the divine word and its divine purity. Of course, I cannot carry on with the, the hundreds of verses in the Quran that speak about plants, but I will finish this episode by a verse that comes in Surah uh, Yasin, which is a very famous chapter of the Quran, where the Quran reads, Allah is addressing unbelievers and showing his uh, might, knowledge, and wisdom, showing his mercy above all his creation. So the verse reads, الذي جعل لكم من الشجر الأخضر نارا فإذا أنتم منه تقدون. Allah is addressing uh, unbelievers, uh, people who negated resurrection after death, accountability, judgment, eternity in life to come. Uh, he's telling them, enough to look at the green tree, which is a living entity, and Allah has made out of that green tree a source for energy for yourselves. الذي جعل لكم من الشجر الأخضر نارا فإذا أنتم منه تقدون. It is Allah who has uh, made for you from the green tree a source of fire that you can kindle. Early commentators on this verse said that, yes, we can use uh, two branches of certain trees called al-marq uh, wal ufar If we strike them together, we can get a spark. And from that spark, we can uh, kindle the fire. Later on, they came to say, I can use the dry wood of the tree or the dry ash uh, as a source of energy. If I could uh, use the wood and uh, burn it away from atmospheric oxygen, I will get uh, a coal, a form of uh, vegetative coal. And later on, we came to discover that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, through his eternal plan, has caused uh, torrential uh, currents to carry plants to deltaic uh, deposits or shorelines. Hence, these were buried to produce immense quantities of coal deposits. And uh, if uh, the heat and the pressure on the coal is increased, uh, this coal can change into gas, or we can gasify it to get coal gas. And uh, if animals in the seas and oceans can feed on these plant debris, they can, it can produce the origin of oil and the associated gas. So out of the green plant, 
Allah has given the human beings the capacity to utilize some of the sources of energy from the sun without any effort. Either I use the dry wood or the dry ash, I use the vegetative coal, I use the rock coal, I can use the gas coal or coal gas, I can use the oil and the associated gas. So all these forms of energy Allah has produced for man out of the fact that he has given that capacity to the green plant to use some of the solar energy and store that solar energy in the form of chemical bonds that can change later on into these various uh, sources for energy. Uh, peat, lignite, uh, anthracite, all these are types of coals, uh, botanic coal, uh, rock coal, uh, we can use uh, coal gas, oil, and natural gas. All this has been produced through the uh, process which Allah has given to the green plant and enabled it through these chloroplastids to store some of the uh, solar energy so that it can be, make it accessible to human beings. And that's why Allah is using this argument against uh, unbelievers, against those who negated uh, resurrection after death, accountability, judgment, eternity, life to come, are saying, look at these green trees, which Allah has given it the capacity to store some of the solar energy, to make it accessible to you in the form of vegetative coal or even dry wood or dry ash, vegetative coal, rock coal, coal gas, oil, and natural gas. And this has been mentioned into uh, this verse in a few words that can contain an immense amount of scientific knowledge that was not known by any human being at the time of revelation of the glorious Quran or for centuries after that. We only came to understand this in the later part of the 19th century, the 20th century. And the precedence of the Quran with this scientific notion is a living testimony to every rational brain that the Quran cannot be the work of man. It's the divine word and it's divine purity. And until we can meet again in another episode, I leave you in peace and greet you in our Islamic way. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. May Allah's peace, blessings and mercy be with you all.